Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am just another tinfoil hat. Welcome to my monthly book review. Now, seeing as this month um, I'm going to be doing a month-long Mothman celebration, it seemed only appropriate to finally review John Keel's The Mothman Prophecies. Now, as you may be able to tell, this book is a little bit beaten up. It's because I've had it for many years and have read it many times over, so it's well-loved. Undoubtedly Keel's most famous work, The Mothman Prophecies, definitely deserves the hype which is heaped upon it. I will say that, you know, first and foremost, it is a fantastic account of all the strange events which transpired in those 13 months spanning November 1966 and December 1967 in the Greater Point Pleasant area. And among Keel's books, it has a very kind of literary feel to it, um, more so than Operation Trojan Horse or the Eighth Tower, which, by the way, we're going to circle back to the Eighth Tower um, near the end of this episode, um, which really tend to focus strictly on the investigation, the research, the accounts, um, and the theorization. The Mothman Prophecies reads almost like a fantastic horror novel. I mean, for example, take the opening paragraph from Chapter 1, Beelzebub Visits West Virginia. Fingers of lightning tore holes in the black skies as an angry cloudburst drenched the surrealistic landscape. It was 3 a.m. on a cold, wet morning in late November 1967, and the little houses scattered along the dirt road winding through the hills of West Virginia were all dark. Some seemed unoccupied in the final stages of decay. Others were unpainted, neglected, forlorn. The whole setting was like the opening scene of a grade B horror film from the 1930s. So now that opening, though, I mean, I think it's a little bit better than a grade B horror film. It really sets off the tone of this almost, it ends up being nearly Lovecrafty, and Keeley even kind of talks about these events in that sort of cosmic sense of just dread and foreboding. And that is woven throughout the fantastic accounts and investigations which took place um, by Keel and others in that time period. Now, as a quick little disclaimer, I will say there are points in this book that are truly disconnected to true anomalies, most notably the Monteleon Vedic affair, which ended up being a total hoax, as well as many of the phone issues that plagued Kiel, which, as it actually turns out, were due to governmental interference. This guy's like a Fox Mulder prototype. However, in contrast to that, you know, the bulk of the book does contain many of the classic accounts of the Mothman, as well as related phenomena that plagued Point Pleasant and the surrounding areas in that time frame. And furthermore, to me at least, it's amazing to read the timeline as Keel experienced it, since he spent so very much time in Point Pleasant getting to know the people. And I truly think that that's one of the most important, or at least visceral, aspects of the book The Mothman Prophecies, is that you can see how Keel involved himself, not just in the strange phenomena going on at the time, but also in the lives of the people in that area. You know, in later interviews with witnesses, such as this fantastic interview with Linda Scarberry, included in Surgeon and Wamsley's book Mothman, The Facts Behind the Legend, it's mentioned that he consistently treated these people with respect and, I would say, care, in addition to wanting to figure out the mystery. In this writing, you can really see, too, how Keel became inexorably a part of that mystery. So I promised a brief call-out to the Eighth Tower, and here it is. The Eighth Tower should definitely be viewed as the companion book to the Mothman Prophecies for the simple reason that it is comprised of everything that was taken out of prophecies. Well, I shouldn't say it's comprised of everything that was taken out of prophecies because Keel actually said that if he wrote everything um, and included everything that he wanted to, you would end up with a six-volume set, which I couldn't be more sad that that never came to be. But anyway... The publishers wanted a more cohesive narrative format for the Mothman prophecies, and you know, I'll say that's exactly what we ended up with, um, which I think has a lot to do with why the Mothman prophecies is so popular, um, in addition, of course, to the movie from 2002. But even prior to that, the Mothman prophecies you know, is a very readable book. It's very enjoyable. People who aren't totally obsessed with all this weird stuff even find it enjoyable just as kind of a strange, bizarre, almost horror or science fiction type story. So. All of that theoretical talk that Keel initially wanted to include was hacked away. Thankfully, Keel saved it and wrote The Eighth Tower, also entitled The Cosmic Question. Now, I actually wrote a longer review of The Eighth Tower for my website, justanothertinfoilhat.com, so if you'd like a more full look at what I really think about it and how I feel about it, go and check that out. I will say here, though, pay no attention to the thoroughly Lovecraftian concept that human life force may be nothing but moon food for ambivalent space beings beyond our perception or comprehensibility. Um, that was the hook that the publishers wanted to give all of the theoretical jargon in the Eighth Tower, I guess, something for people to follow. And when I first read it, I did not know that that was a literary device. And again, I was quite a bit younger when I read the Eighth Tower. I actually had to take a break from everything paranormal for a couple weeks. So pay no mind to the gloom and doom of the Eighth Tower. It is a fantastic look at all of the theoretical talk, which really underlaid 
everything that was going on in the events of the Mothman prophecies. You know, really, if you want both sides of what was going on there, kind of the Mothman coin, these two books are invaluable together. Prophecies kind of gives life to the theories of Eighth Tower, while the Eighth Tower provides insight to the events of the Mothman prophecies. So if you enjoyed this review of Kiel's The Mothman Prophecies, please like, and if you're new to this field of crop circles, go ahead and subscribe to see what weirdness the future may have in store. Till then, you can keep up with whatever else I might possibly have going on on my website, justanothertinfoilhat.com, and for exclusive content, be sure to check out my Patreon page, which is also listed under Just Another Tinfoil Hat. For today, I am Zelia Edgar, signing off. Do we?